The first step in color correction is to get it right in the field. Get the proper color balance, exposure, and focus. Now most folks like to use automatic settings, and that's fine to a point, but since you're taking this course, it's likely that you want to step up your game a bit. So you want to switch to some manual settings. Well, the first one of those is automatic white balance, changing that to something a little bit more manual. Now most folks, when they get color balance or white balance, they point their camera at something white. And that sometimes doesn't give you a true color balance because the white is too bright. That's why I like to use a gray card like this. I think it gives a truer color balance. It's also important to know that you change your color balance every time you go from one scene to the next. Even if you go from open shade to sunlight or back to open shade, as I did here at this produce stand, it's important to get a new color balance each time. You can see that when you're in the open shade, the sunlight around there looks blue. And if you step out into the sunlight, everything looks orange. So you do need to update your color balance each time you move from one scene to the next. The next step in getting it right in the field is to get the proper exposure, the proper f-stop or aperture or iris setting. A lot of folks rely on automated settings, but I think it's better to do it manually. And you can check your work by looking at a couple of features that come with most camcorders. This camera, for instance, has what's called zebra striping. And as you look at the monitor here, you see little zebra stripes where it's overexposed. You decide what the overexposure level is. I like to set mine at 100% or 100 IRE. So anything above that is gonna be just too bright. You can also use a waveform monitor. To get a properly exposed clip, you typically want to have your waveform go from the bottom of the scope to the top of the scope, or the zero line to the 100 line. Now, you don't want to do this for a dark shot or a night shot, but you do want to have it go from zero to 100 for most any other kind of shot. The final step is to get the focus right. Now, in camcorders like this, where the chips are relatively small, as opposed to digital single lens reflex, which have larger chips, you have a little bit more latitude in your focus. Only when you're zoomed in really tight do you notice that focus might be off. If you're wide, it usually looks pretty good. Nevertheless, to get your focus, zoom in on something, get your focus, and then pull back to whatever angle you want to pull back to to get your shot. Also, consider your aperture setting and your shutter speed. The tighter your aperture, meaning the larger the number, like f22, f32, then the greater your depth of field, so almost everything will be in focus then. But if you want to capture action without any blurring, like these cars, you might need to set your shutter speed to a thousandth of a second. In that case, you need to open up your aperture wide, so the focus is much more critical then. So bottom line, you do want to get it right in the field. Get the proper color balance, exposure, and focus.